Now, I can't imagine that Father of the Bride would have presented the British Board of Film Classification with any problems whatsoever. No violence, no rape, marital or otherwise, possibly just the odd four-letter word. A straightforward PG certificate, in fact, meaning that with parental guidance, anyone may see it. It is, of course, the Board of Film Classification that distributes these certificates. U, denoting that the picture is suitable for everyone. PG, and then 12, 15 and 18, meaning that nobody under those ages may be admitted. The director of the board is James Furman, and he came into the studio to explain the workings of his organisation. But before we see that interview, take a look at how the Catholic Church decided what the locals might or might not see in the film Cinema Paradiso. James, to what extent then do you regard yourselves at the board as the guardians of the public morals? Well, it, it used to be said by my predecessors that the board was, was not that, the last thing it wanted to be. But, of course, if you say public morality, public morality in, in implies a lot of things that we must worry about. We must worry about rape, incitement to crime of any kind. One of our basic ground rules is that we don't pass films which will encourage or incite to crime. And uh, as this is built into the Obscene Publications Act, which is a, a tendency to deprave and corrupt, it is a strictly moral test of the criminal law, and so we must apply that test. It astonishes me slightly that films like Terminator 2 and Die Hard 2 both got 15 certificates, and I regard those as perniciously violent films in that they depict violence as being <coughs> something casual, that, that people can get most horribly beaten and like that they're up again and, and fighting mm -hmm. and it makes violence look un almost as if it, it isn't really harmful. Um, does that not enter into your thought that that, that that might be dangerous that kind of to show, allow, allow that yeah. kind of violence to be shown to 15 year olds? Well both those two films we spent a long time on um, the company said in both cases they were prepared to cut them indeed when we first saw each of those films we saw it on the understanding that they would be prepared to cut and in fact in Die Hard 2 they cut a lot to get it down to 15. Um, and it was extremely successful in that version, the UK version, both on film and video. The Terminator 2, um, we thought the actual violence was largely between two machines. And if the violence had been between real people, I think we'd have certainly been an 18. But the, the Yeah, the but violence... I mean, they were so obviously disguised as human beings that, uh, all right, you, we were told they were machines. And, and it was reiterated the machines, but you looked upon them as people, didn't well, you? Well, if you know, if a, if a man sticks out his finger and a sword grows out of it, which he then sticks into somebody's eye, and you don't see it entering the eye, it's it's so make believe, it's so yeah. science fiction. And horror often uses blood and gore to make its effects, but Terminator, the ter both Terminator films are really science fiction, and science fiction is in such a fantastic setting that I think the audience does suspend all of its belief uh, when it goes into them. It knows it's going to be entertained by something that is outlandish. And Terminator 2 is strictly outlandish. But the other point of, 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 of difference between here and America, surely, is language. I mean, almost anything yeah. goes. And yeah. Eddie Murphy's films would be silent if you took out the four-letter <laughs> words, practically. Now, does that presumably creates quite a few problems for you, because the British seem to resent bad language almost yeah. more than violence, yeah. which I don't understand. Yes, I always have great difficulty at uh, conferences on the continent explaining the British taboos about four-letter words, which they don't seem to share on the continent. It may be because those words are normally taken out of the film when they dub them into French yeah. or German. But uh, it is a worry here. It's a worry in the junior categories, where some of the milder lavatorial swear words seem to come thick and fast in American comedy, sometimes comedy made for the whole family. And uh, sexual expletives, the usual ones, uh, are, are uh, you know, come thick and fast in films that are 15 or 18. We try to make a difference between those two categories, but I think for the most part in Eddie Murphy films, in every other respect, his films are fairly innocent. The Beverly Hills Cop films are, are, are nice, pleasant films, apart from the language. So they're, they're 15, but some people find them offensive. Where do you stand on this argument about the effect that violence witnessed in the cinema might have upon the audience, that violence breeds violence? And I suppose, I mean, the great classic case of this was the Hungerford killings and the popular press, the tabloids, sure. are saying, oh, it's all down to Rambo. Now, wh what are your feelings on that? Well, I think that... Uh that uh, accusation about Rambo was, was totally misguided. Uh, there was no evidence that the Hungerford killer had uh, ever actually seen the Rambo films or owned a video. Uh, it's possible always to, to make links, 
and there may be connections, but the connection is rarely cause and effect, and it's almost impossible to prove cause and effect. The one area where there, there is very, very good evidence that the effect is possible is on sexual violence, where very good um, survey evidence has been done in the States, experimental laboratory tests have been done where people have been, been shown a certain number of films featuring sexual violence to women, some where women have responded positively to rape and uh, measure the effect on the audience, and it has indicated that male viewers can be influenced in attitudes. I think there are some people walking around like loaded guns who can be tipped one way or the other by, by uh, a media experience. Yeah. Maybe you can't gear entertainment no, to people I, like that. I, I don't Otherwise, so. you never, no. you know, I mean, Shakespeare would never have written no. Hamlet with all those deaths in the last no. act. I, I, I do think there is a problem in the, the, the gradual increase step by step, drip, drip, drip over the 80s of slightly more violence in films, even in junior category films, is a worry because kids nowadays are, are becoming acclimatized to more violence mm. than kids 20 years ago. And I think on the whole, that is not a healthy phenomenon. I suppose the next big one coming up that might create some problems for you is Cape Fear, which has had the most uh, tremendous furor in, in, in America. Mm. Um, have you seen that one? I haven't, no, I wish I had. Has your board seen it? Uh, it has, yes. And, and what, what conclusion did it come um, to? It's been past 18, and uh, I believe they, they, they thought it was a fine film. Um, I've no doubt I will see it fairly soon. But, uh, but did they ask for any cuts? No, they didn't. Yeah. Not at all? No, I don't think we've, we've cut a Scorsese film, certainly not during my time at the board. Is, is, is that because you're an admirer of Scorsese? No, I think it's just because he's, he's usually very cautious about what he does. He's not, he doesn't really make exploitation films. Mm. He, he creates a, a, a sense of fear in, his, in many of his thrillers and films about violence. But uh, on the whole, he's, he never goes over the line. He's got a sense of, of uh, what, what's necessary and, and anything excessive is excessive by aesthetic standards as well as by moral standards. James, that's lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Pleasure. So there you are, the censor's tale. I'm encouraged by the fact that the brilliant, though admittedly ultra-violent Cape Fear has been passed uncut for adult audiences. After all, if an 18 year old enough to vote, fight, get married and take out a mortgage, then you must be considered old enough to judge for yourself what you find acceptable in films. But I do have a niggling concern about the cutting of movies for video release. In the case of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, for instance, which we touched on in the last programme, it's all very admirable to be protective of the young, but grown-ups have a right to be heard too. If, as with Robin Hood, there's some doubt about the violence in a film, then why not simply give it a more restricted certificate and let parents decide whether it's suitable for their children, or have parents totally opted out of that kind of responsibility these days?